so happy that everyone has came today on this wintry day. I'm so glad the weather is so much better than yesterday, right? Um, so, just kind of stalling for Michael. It's queen. Okay. So, welcome everyone uh, today. This is our session on ESS and promotion, employment, secur uh, employment security status and promotion. Uh, so, hopefully, we'll get some good information. I want to recognize, of course, each session, our team over here. So I'm the chair this year, Cynthia Merritt, and then we have Marissa, who has done an excellent job. And I just want to commend our team, uh, our committee, who has each month has done an excellent job, such an excellent job, so willing to help and, and, and uh, get the speakers and get everybody together and organize this so well. So let's, can we just give them a hand? Uh, our co-chair, Marissa Henderson, um, Josie is a member at large, Tanisha is secretary, and then Nora, she's not here today, uh, she's a member at large. We also have Kristen uh, Chenery, she is, she'll be on our panel, Michelle Fecto, executive director, um, Tammy over here, we all know Tammy's a doll. And Mark Billy in the back, and Helen's coming over, he's coming in. <laughs> so we just, I'm so proud to serve with everybody. It's like sounding like I'm ending, right? Okay. <laughs> so today we have, we're going to start with Miss Kelly Dormer. And she's going to be uh, reviewing uh, ESS on the PowerPoint. She's going to be reviewing ESS and promotion. So let's welcome her. And then we have, we're going to have a panel uh, with Miss Kristen Chenery and Miss Tracy Castle. And Kristen has been here for 16 years, so she's our veteran and archive, archive is four. <laughs> and then Tracy has been here almost six years, in, six years in March for, for uh, academic advisor too. So she's been, they've both been through the process. So. Get your questions ready for them, and um, so thereafter we'll have Kristen and Tracy come up to the panel. Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm Kelly Dormer, and I just want to say thank you for inviting me to talk today. I'm not really sure why, but hopefully this will be helpful. Um, Oh, and whenever I talk, I'm not nervous, but I turn bright red, so don't like feel like you're making me nervous. It's just a thing that happens, and that's how I make myself less nervous. Um, okay, so I'm a disability specialist in Student Disability Services. I started here in October of 2013. I was promoted to an advisor in three last year, and I got ESS last year. So I call 2018 the year of talking about how great I am, because you just have to write over and over about how great you are. Um, so I've served on the Divisional Selective Salary Committee twice, and I think there's a lot of parallels to Selective Salary and then the ESS and promotion process. Um, and I call myself the Resident Electronic Packet Assembler because I have Adobe, and so people bring their stuff to me to put their headings in. And because of that, I've read a lot of people's packets, so I feel like that maybe that offers some helpful insight. And then I always like on Twitter when people say all opinions are my own because I think the biggest thing is this is just my opinion and I come to these and I got very frustrated year after year because I would listen and I would be like that doesn't apply to me or that's not how my division does it or I don't agree with that and so I think the biggest takeaway is to there's structure to this process but you really should make it your own so I'm gonna go over like the basic outline of everything but a lot of the information is Posted, so I really wanted to spend a lot of time on this presentation talking about specific strategies, particularly for the personal statement as you work on going through ESS and promotion. So, because I think there are people who are new, what are promotion and ESS? So, promotion is really your increase in rank. You're going from an advisor two to an advisor three, a counselor one to a counselor two, whatever it might be. And it's really based on your merit, your achievement demonstration of working at a level higher than your current classification. Um, 
So you have to be here for three years before you're eligible to apply for promotion. And if you aren't promoted, that doesn't mean you don't have a job anymore. It just means you're not promoted. And so there's things to work on to apply again. I also just will say I violate PowerPoint 101. And I put a lot of content on my slides because I want you to be able to take pictures or I'm happy to share the slides after so that you don't have to like try to take notes. Um, so it feels like these are content heavy. I intended it that way. Um, EFS, that's similar concept to tenure. And I took this out of the union contract because I liked it. And it says it encourages a long-term commitment between the individual and the university. And so I think that that's a really cool concept to think about. ESS is really the university saying, we want you here long term. We see the value that you offer, the things that you have achieved, and we want you to be here. And you're sort of saying that back. Like, I've been here five years, and this is where I want to continue to grow my career. And that's really to the benefit of the university and to us. And so you have to be here. You have to have it by five years of service. And then I don't know why I thought you got a raise with ESS. I was a little disappointed that you don't. So there is no financial incentive to ESS other than the fact that you continue to have a job, which is great. <laughs> um, OK, so the process overview. So your promotion packets, those are usually due around February um, to the provost's office. I know that in my division, we have to turn them in in January because the divisional committee looks at them and then they give you feedback before it goes to the provost's office. So I don't know how that varies depending on where you work, but approximately the same timeline for all academic staff. The ESS packet, that process begins eight months prior to your fifth anniversary. And so that's really your own specific timeline. So you have to think about what your hire date was and back that up eight months. But that's really when you have to notify your supervisor of your intent by providing them your packet. So your personal statement and all of that. So you really should probably start nine or 10 months in advance. Um, and then part of the contract guidance, you should be notified three months prior of your ESS. I found out four days prior. So you know, there's some wiggle room. <clears throat> OK, so written recommendations. So if you look on the cover sheet, it has a list of the people that are going to write letters of recommendation for you or review your packet and write a recommendation based on that as the time, like as it moves through the process. So I listed all of that and then I put who are these people because it varies on where you work. I don't think that where I work that we had a school, college, or department review. Um, so I think this, I didn't really know who these people were. So I think you need to ask in your department or division what that constitutes. Um, and really at the end of the day, when you see those recommendations, no you do not. They're really serious that you should not see your recommendations and I don't really know why, but I guess because it promotes people being honest as they recommend you, particularly your director. But I mean, more so for promotion than ESS, I would always say that if you're thinking about going up for promotion, you should have a conversation about that with your boss and get their feedback. Because do you want to go up for promotion if they're not going to support you? And if they're not going to support you, should you figure out why that is? And is that an issue where you have more room to grow before they feel ready? Or is that like some larger issue that maybe you need to deal with with the union? so that you have that same opportunity to grow in your profession. But I know that I had a conversation with my boss, and she said, you could go up this year, or you could wait next year. If you decided to wait a year, here are the things that I would work on. And I thought that was really helpful for helping me frame what my personal goals were for that upcoming year as it came to really strengthening relationships with different collaborations I was working on, and um, you know, making sure that when it came time to ask for evaluations that people really knew me and the work I was doing to make sure that those were stronger. So it wasn't negative feedback. It was just like, absolutely, I think you could go this year. But if you went next year, here are all these things that you could maybe add. So I think just having a conversation about that is really helpful, particularly for promotion, because you do have a decision to make about when you want to go, whereas ESS is more of a locked-in timeline. Okay evaluators. 
So you can make suggestions to your supervisor about who you want your evaluators to be, but the final decision of who they ask is theirs. What I would recommend is thinking about who you would like to write an evaluation for you. Because depending on what unit you're in, if you there's a ton of people, your boss may not know all of the different colleagues that you have relationships with on campus at the same level that you do. So make a list of people and write a little blurb about how you work with them or why you would think they would be good. And give that to your supervisor to help them make a choice that you feel would best represent the work you've done. That's I don't think perfectly acceptable. And then um, external evaluators, which you can only use really for promotion. I, I would recommend making sure that you really think critically about who, you're, who you would recommend for that. Because you don't just want to pick somebody at your church because they know you and like you. You really want that person to be able to speak to how your external activities impact your internal job performance. So when I went up for promotion, I had, I'm a board member for a state chapter um, related to higher ed and disability. So I asked the president to be one of my external, well, I recommended that she be one of my external evaluators. And she agreed, but she could really talk about how my work with that association positively impacted the larger field that I worked in and how that strengthened my knowledge of the job and how it changes to bring that back internally to make a difference. So I think definitely thinking that out, you, an external evaluator can be a really, really strong thing to have if you have those connections. And then allow ample opportunity for your evaluators to write your letter. Um, when I was going up, my boss asked right before the holiday break, and then nobody worked on it over the holiday break, and then it was hounding people like the day it was due to get the letter in. But she was doing that, I wasn't doing that, but it still made me feel anxious. So make sure you're starting your process with ample opportunity for people to take the time to write a quality letter about you and the work you're doing. <clears throat> your professional record. So I know that we do a whole workshop on this, so I'm not going to dig too deep into it, but it really should just be an updated version of what you're submitting each year for your selective salary. And I think it's also really important, this really frustrates me whenever I've been on the Selective Salary Committee. Your professional record and then your narrative, make sure the activities match where you're putting them in. So don't put them in service on your professional record and then talk about them in job performance later if they're very different. Because I think it's hard for the person reading to follow what you mean by those activities. And then... If you're new and you haven't done a professional record yet, this is really just your bullet point list of activities um, based on the different categories. And then you provide context and explain the importance of them in your narrative. And there's lots of samples around that I'm sure people would be happy to share. Okay, the personal statement. This is not optional. I do not know why it says it's optional on the cover letter. I one time was talking to someone who said, well, I'm not going to do it, it's optional. Like, why waste your time putting together a packet if you're not going to write a really good personal statement? So that would be my biggest takeaway. I feel like the personal statement is the single most important part of your ESS and your promotion packet, <coughs> followed by the quality of evaluations that you get. I don't know why we have to do, like, the whole printout of supporting evidence. I don't know that seeing a receipt that I attended a conference makes you feel differently about how, if I should get promoted or not. But we'll do that because that's part of the process. This is just not optional. This is your opportunity to highlight all of the things that you're doing, all of your successes, all of your contributions, the impact you are making. I think, too, when I talk to like colleagues and friends, people feel like they don't have a lot to say <coughs> because they're not out being the president of something or presenting at national conferences and that's okay because that's not for everybody so feeling comfortable that even the small things matter even if you feel like all you did was my first year here I created a Google Doc of information which seems very basic and that like blew people's minds that I worked with that there was one central place that we could all look up information and that really streamlined how we were working in that first year of service. Because instead of having to wait for my colleague to get out of an appointment to ask her a question, 
I could find that information in our share drive. <coughs> and that was like just not something that we were using. But you can expand on that. I mean, hopefully in five years you've done more than create a Google Doc. But even those small things are important. And you can have a big impact and never leave this campus to do things outside of here. And so I think that just feeling comfortable that meaningful contributions come in all shapes and sizes and everybody can't be out presenting nationally all at the same time. Like someone still has to be here doing the work of your office and making a difference in the day-to-day -day functioning. I also think just don't assume that people reading your packet know what your job is or what things you're doing that are great or what things you should be doing. So particularly like in my division, our selective salary committee is like <coughs> CAPS and APEX and TRIO and like I couldn't tell you what TRIO is supposed to be doing. Like I don't know. I don't work over there. So I think when I'm reviewing that record, well that sounds good, but is that what you should be doing or is that going above and beyond? And for disability services, we didn't have anybody from disability services on our um, unit promotion and tenure committee. So there is nobody there to say, well, this is what Kelly does and this is why it's important. So it's really up to me to put in my professional record a clear, a clear explanation of what I should be doing and why that matters. So I think taking the time to really articulate your job. I also think to, again, to go back to the Unselective Salary Committee, when I was sitting there, there was people who submitted stuff that hadn't updated their activities in five years. And someone else was like, well, but I know they're working on this. Well, I put a lot of effort into this. So if you don't think it's important enough to write it down, I'm not going to assume it's important for you. So you really have to think about, do I want people to know about this? And it's your responsibility to make sure that it's clear. So take the time to write it down. I also think just digging deeper. So don't just say what you're doing, but really take the time to explain why that matters and how that makes an impact. So one of the things that I really highlighted in my professional <coughs> record was we got a student case management system. And I took the responsibility to manage that, and I do a data report every month. That's one hour out of every month of my time, so it seems really insignificant. But we've tracked data now for four years down to every student with a disability <coughs> based on what major they're in. So I can go to pharmacy and health science and, and say, you know you have 48 students with disabilities like in your major? And maybe that's information they can take to adjust something in their program. Or I can say, look it, we were serving 1,100 students two years ago, and now we're serving 1,900 students. So where did that come from? And we can target our outreach. And then that's data that I can take to my boss who can say, Look how much we've grown in two years. We need more funding to operate these programs. So sure, I'm not like individually getting us more funding, but my work is playing a role in supporting her work to improve our overall office, and that is really important. So that hour a day is making, or hour a month, is making a big impact in how we serve students with disabilities on this campus. And so if you can make it meaningful in that way for people, I think it's really powerful in telling your story to people who don't know what you're doing. Okay, this is also your portfolio and your opportunity. So follow the requirements, but add the things you think is important. And so I put up here my confession. My personal statement was 10 and a half pages long. I've read guidance that it says three to five, five to seven. No one's ever accused me of being brief. <laughs> but I will also say that I got um, an email from the provost that said it was the best personal statement he's ever read. And I don't say that to like brag, but to be honest that just because somebody over here tells you theirs is five, if you have quality content that fits ten pages and you're using those ten pages to really explain what you're doing, then forget that they have five. Do what you want to do and what you think is going to give you the best opportunity to get ESS or promotion. And so I think like I got really hung up and I poured over this for days, like trying to make it five pages. And finally I was like, you know what? I think all of these things are important. I had four different people review it. Nobody could help me figure out what to cut out. So that's what I turned in and it worked out for me. So I think that 
just being okay to do what you feel like represents your work is completely acceptable. And I also do think there's a difference between unnecessary rambling and quality content. So if you read it and it's 20 pages, that's maybe excessive. But <laughs> maybe you're just killing it and you've got 20 pages worth of stuff and that's okay. Um, also creating subsections. So this was something that another person in our area had done. And then my coworker and I were both like, well, that makes a lot of sense because it made it easier to read. So we broke it up into, well, my personally was, it was supporting documentation, but then I had presentations I gave, conferences I attended, projects I'm working on, feedback. So it was just easier to offer context as they were flipping through it. But at the end of the day, like you need to decide what the meat of your packet should be. And maybe based on the work you're doing, like that supporting documentation is really, really important because you can highlight more of what you're doing. That's great, but you can decide for yourself where you think you can best shine a light on the reasons why you should be promoted. Okay, so where do I begin? I think that if you're sitting down and you're starting to think about going through this process, it's very overwhelming. So look at the selective salary statements that you've turned in in the previous years. What did you highlight each year um, as something that you were working on? What does your supervisor talk about in their annual reviews that they think you're doing really well on? What are you most passionate about that you're currently working on? Um, and start to kind of just make a list from there to help you create an outline of what areas you want to highlight. I also started with my email inbox. So I went to the very beginning to my first day of work and I just started going through emails and printing out you know, presentations or positive feedback. And that's kind of just a weird thing to do anyway if you've got free time because I was reading emails I sent the first month I was here and I was like, oh my God, somebody should have told me what, like, how dumb I sound. And so like, just seeing the progression of how I became more professional and how I learned to articulate myself better. And even those things, I mean, I didn't write about it, but I think that's a good reminder of I really have grown a lot in five years in a way that maybe I didn't think that I had. I also think asking your colleagues for their feedback, like the person who works next to you, what did they think about when they think about you as an employee or you as a coworker? What did they think you do really well? Because maybe that sparks something in you that you want to highlight that you hadn't already thought of. Um, so I think those would be really good places to start to help formulate how you want to focus your packet. Um, so these are just some tips and tricks. A lot of them I think have been said before, but the start of every month I have 30 minutes on my calendar to update my professional record. So I just go back from the last month and write all the things that I've attended, and then I clean it up at the end of the year so it's not so overwhelming. Um, I also have a Word document where I write down things that I'm doing that I think are maybe unique. And I think especially if you're newer and you're starting to work on this, that's a really good way just to remember like the small things you did. Like maybe you've been here a month, but you took the initiative to create a new process or offer feedback or volunteer to do something. And maybe you won't remember that 10 months from now when you have to submit your selective salary form, but just keeping that living document I also have email boxes, so I have one that says you're great, and so whenever someone tells me I'm great, I put that email in there, and then I have one, it doesn't happen that often, <laughs> and then when somebody, like, you know, projects I'm working on or if I'm going to a conference, so it's easier to find those things later instead of having to search through your whole email box. Um, and then also, I mean, I already kind of talked about making sure that you're making things understandable, but using your job description too, so keeping that on hand and having that as sort of a framework of your job expectations and what you're doing and how you're meeting all of those goals. And that sometimes, I know in our office, you start doing something and then I realize down there, I'm like, oh, this is part of my job. I'm like, oh, it really wasn't, I just sort of started doing that. And that's okay. Like it, is something that maybe became part of your job, but it wasn't an original expectation. So it's still something you can highlight as a special activity. Um, so things to keep in mind, I definitely think getting feedback from other people. 
I have four different people read my personal statement, as I said. I think that feedback is really important, especially from people who have already gone through the process. Um, and just don't take my word for it. Like you don't have, you can sit up here and be like, that girl is crazy and that doesn't hurt my feelings. Because your department and division may just have a completely different way that they want to approach this process. And so you need to make sure that what you're doing is fitting with the people that are going to review your packet. And then also just realizing that every committee values different things. So the people who make up the committee each bring their own opinion and preferences as to what they want to see. So what your coworker did three years ago and the feedback they got may not be the feedback that you're going to get now. So I think, again, that just comes back to staying true to how you want to show all of the work you're doing and the achievements and just doing a really good job at explaining all of that. And also just being consistent with your categories. So deciding where you want to put things and being consistent. So I put this example on here. So I've come to these before. And they'll talk about how working at orientation at the booths is part of your job. That is not a part of my job. My coworker Sharice could sign up for every single orientation if she wanted to, and nobody would care. It's service. We get the list, and we decide who is going to do what and who is going to work each orientation. So I think also thinking about how your specific office works, because sure, there's a general expectation that we're going to divide that up evenly, but if Sharice was like, I want to work every Saturday in the whole year, every time there's an orientation, my boss isn't going to be like, no, you can't do that. It's, everyone has to take a turn. So I think that's OK. For us, that is service. So really just thinking about, again, what is happening in your department and what are your expectations, and committing to putting it where you think it fits best. Okay, so why is all of this important? So obviously promotion is like the largest opportunity you have as an employee to increase your salary at one time. So we get the yearly raise, but your promotion is the biggest raise you're going to get outside of, you know, getting a whole new job. So obviously there's a financial incentive to do this and do this well. The ESS is long-term job security. When I talk to people that work at other schools about that, they think that's so cool that we have a process that after five years you can guarantee your employment because you've done really well. And so I think recognizing that while it's overwhelming and time consuming and frustrating and all of those negative things, it's also a really cool opportunity that not a lot of employers offer to academic staff. It feels good to have other people validate your hard work. So when you get that email that says congratulations you got promoted, that's really motivating. That feels really good. Like, I did all of this. I put this packet together. People read it. I earned that. And so I think just that kind of feedback means a lot. But also just remembering, again, I don't know why I was asked to talk today, but I am assuming that somebody was on the committee and thought I did a good packet, and so they recommended me to write that. But this is, a lot of people are reading your packet. And you don't know everybody who's reading your packet. But if you think about it, my boss's boss is reading that packet. The provost is reading that packet. A committee of my peers is reading that packet. So what a cool opportunity that you get once or twice in your career here <coughs> to have people really understand at a higher level what you're doing and to shine a light on the efforts you're making and the progress <coughs> you've made, but also to highlight the work that your office is doing. I think that, you know, my boss told me that her boss gave her a lot of really good feedback about Sharice and mine went up together. Sorry, Sharice, they keep talking about you. But like, oh, I didn't know that your staff was doing all of that. Oh, I didn't know like your staff had really great packets. And I think even that small feedback is maybe now it's in the back of her mind, oh, SDS is really doing awesome work. And SDS is really <coughs> promoting that their academic staff get involved in things outside of the university. So. That's maybe not something that you have a direct feedback or benefit from, but you just never know who's going to read your packet and how that might open up an opportunity for you down the road. So just taking that really seriously I think is important. Because um, that wasn't something that I thought about as I was putting my packet together. But then afterwards, people would say different things to me and I was like, oh wow, that's really, 
very cool that that person knows about that thing that I did. Um, so just, <clears throat> when you get frustrated as you scan in a thousand pages into your computer, there's a larger reason for it, and it is really positive. That's pretty much what I have. So does anybody have any questions? <coughs> Helen, can you give some more examples? Because a lot of a lot of staff get confused with that service job, like with mm -hmm. that orientation. <clears throat> like my example is like, say you get asked to give a presentation at the residence hall. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about like where you would put that kind of presentation and you know, like one time versus every year you go back, you know, like so if somebody asks me to come give a presentation to the RAs, which is something that happens, I personally put that under service to the university okay. because I don't view that as part of the daily expectation of my job. My job is to be in my office serving students and making sure their materials are accessible. Yeah, I put it so, under service as well. But I think that for other people, if outreach is part of your job, then that is something you should put under job performance. And so I think, again, it's just thinking critically about what your expectations are versus somebody else's. Okay. Yes. Um, if anybody wants a copy of this, just let me know, and I'm happy to send you my slides. Um, I'm also more than happy to show anybody my packet, because lots of people showed their packets to me to help me as I put mine together. And I've heard that other people have not had that same courtesy to look at someone's packet. So if you don't have someone in your department that wants to show you what they've submitted, I'm more than happy to show you mine. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. Uh, I did want to make sure that everyone knew what was in the handouts that were um, in the front. So the first page, the white page, has the timelines for ESS and then promotion on the back. Promotion might be a little, uh, it's a general, generalization. Um, let's just give people a timeline of what they should think about um, when they assemble their packet. Um, now, I do not have the specific cover sheets, but on the blue paper, I have everything that is on the cover sheet. So all the um, information that you should be including um, on either cover sheet on ESS or promotion. And both of those cover sheets are located at provost.wayne.edu, which I put the link right on top. Did anyone have any specific questions about those? I also want to make sure that you fill out the, uh, um, the, the questionnaire so we can make sure we get your feedback and use it. It's really, really helpful to plan in the future. Um, but we do want to field questions from anyone in the um, audience to our great panelists. I mean, we want to make sure that we're answering any specific things that might have popped up during the presentation. So I'm going to turn it over to Tracy and Kristen. Thank you so much. I do want to make a quick clar uh, clarification about evaluators. Your evaluators are additional evaluators and not external. That, that word was changed a few years ago. Ricardo worked um, very closely with the provost's office to make that change. So your evaluators do not need to be external to Wayne State. They do need to be external to your unit. So you don't have to worry about contacting, you know, four to six people who, who have no idea what you do or where you work. So I just want to make that quick clarification. And I guess I'll say I'm from engineering, and I know when I first came here, too, it was confusing to me because I would come to these um, presentations and I learned every unit really does things slightly different or sometimes significantly different. Uh, so it, it is important that you, I mean, I think these, and Kelly's presentation I thought was really great. Um, these are very valuable, but it's also, I think, just as invaluable and just as important that you talk to people within your unit to find out, you know, what is it, what are the expectations there and how are things done there because um, it could be different from, from unit to unit. And I know in engineering, we do do things differently than some of the other units. So we do that. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> do things significantly different. Um, so I've served on the university promotion and tenure committee for academic staff. I can't even count how many times now. Um, but one thing that you should know is that the person that is on that committee representing your college 
should know something about you before they get that dossier for the first time from the provost office. So the person that serves on the committee is always a senior academic staff member um, at a higher, if not the highest, rank for your classification. So take some time to get to know the people um, that serve on your committees and that are at the higher ranks in your departments, in your college, because those people are the ones that are going to be fighting for you at the university committee level. So can I just ask, I know people may be uh, a little bit hesitant about questions, but who here is going um, for the first time? Can you just raise your hand if you're going up for either, either of these procedures for the first time? Just in January, I began full time. Yay! Um, so for me, the timelines are a little bit wonky. Like I don't know if I need to wait three years to apply for a promotion because I've been in my role for three years and I didn't. When I interviewed three years ago, I had no idea what the differences were between advisor, this, that, and the other. And so now I know because I had a master's degree, which could have, should have maybe been hired as. So I don't know if I'm supposed to wait or if there's somebody I talked to in the interim. Um, you can check with the HR person for your area to sure. figure out what the fractional time accrual was for those first three years. Fractional time accrual. And if, there, if it was accrued. Um, okay. We had people in at Ruther that were on four-fifths time sure. for years and years and years. So they got to their five years for ESS you know, application okay. a little bit longer. It took a little bit longer than it did for other people. But Michelle can probably yeah, speak to the contract actually says you have to be at that time to come in. Oh, it's ESS. But on the promotion, I think that that's more my question. Yeah, the promotion, I think, <coughs> and I want, I want to look, I didn't bring the contract, forgive me. Yes. Um, but I think there's more flexibility on the promotion. Um, and there's even language on the promotion that, you know, that you can go up before three. So there's there's just more flexibility on that okay. going on. But again, I think the advice that was given about knowing your uh, that Kristen gave about knowing your advocate, sure. somebody you know, letting them know that you that I, now you were in the union for those part time. You weren't classified out of the union. Okay, yeah. So that yeah, that's all that's important. I can't answer the part time full time, but I can tell you I was my hire date is in March. So I was off sort of that traditional academic cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so when I first got here, it took me probably a year and a half to get the answer about when technically I could go up for promotion, the three year. Um, and it was um, finally explained to me um, that you could go up for promotion. Um, I actually submitted my paperwork before I had three years in. Um, as long as when August rolls around and that promotion, if you if you receive the promotion, as long as you're you've been here at three years when that kicks in, then you're okay. So I don't know if that helps. Okay. Hi, I'm Twy May and I'm an advisor in the APEC department. Um, I have a question, um, and I'm kind of gathering my answer, but I would like to answer specifically. Um, so with the three and five year time frame, does it go according to um, the time that you're here at the university or does it go according to the time that you're in a specific department? So say if I'm here for three years as an advisor two and I transfer to another advisor two position somewhere else on campus, within that three years, would, I, would it reset or... <laughs> Would, it, would I still go according to that three years? And then also five years for the promotion. Would it reset or? Yes. I mean for ESS. Yeah, I'm sorry, for ESS. Would it reset or would it? I'm almost positive that for promotion, it does not reset. Only because there's been people in my department that have changed jobs and they're, they, they got the time put towards their promotion calendar in their new position. But 
that's probably a contractual question that. Yeah, and again, um, did anybody bring the contract? I didn't want to help, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Um, okay, it's, it's Article 
like the, the more that you can have, I mean, I think it is, is the point that, to do that. Um, when you are suggesting people for your evaluator list, include people that can speak about all the areas of evaluation. So job performance, professional achievement, and service. Um, you don't have to have one person address all of those in your letter, but you can have one person that only addresses one of them. Um, and that's helpful to show that you're you know, a well-rounded Wayne State employee. And then your personal statement, um, this was touched on a little bit earlier, but highlight things that you've created, processes or policies that you've changed or implemented or revised. Um, all of that shows leadership and that you have the respect of your peers, which is something that's important to highlight. And um, please, please keep your supporting documentation tight. You do not need to include every conference presentation you've ever given at every conference. You know, it, it's a sample. So one, one of each type of thing is all you need to include. I'm not even kidding when I say that we had a 146 page packet a couple of years ago. And all of us were like, somebody needs to tell these people to not do this. So I'm that person. It's how we did not do that. Um, yeah, you're, if your supporting documentation section is longer than the rest of your packet, there is a mistake. So just keep that in mind when you're putting things together. Can I add something here? I never heard it. Uh, in all these years that I've been around, think of your professional record. You have three areas on the weight of each and every one. Your job performance is rated with four points out of seven. Two are for professional achievement and service, it's only one. So don't get over involved with service. Professional achievement is good, but keep in mind, job performance, it's the get the highest weight. Four, two, one. That's all I can tell you. And definitely make sure that you read your factors so that you know what the criteria is for promotion and for ESS. Uh, because those, I mean, there are some kind of general guidelines across all academic staff classifications, but there are some differences um, from unit to unit and from college to college. So make sure that you know what those factors are. And I, to, to just to expand on that a little bit, the factors I think are important. And even if you could, when you're writing your uh, personal statement, you're incorporating each of those factors somehow in that personal statement. And the personal statement, um, you know, sometimes I think we have real challenges kind of, you know, telling about how great we are. But that really is what you need to do in the personal statement. Um, and I thought Kelly did a really good job at saying, you know, what, what were the things that you did that had a significant impact either on your unit or on the students that you work with? Um, those are really important um, aspects to highlight um, in a personal statement. More questions? How many have started and how many are going up for promotion on ESS this year? Start the process now. 